Hello, this is Jeremy Schumack with the Photoshop Expert Series, episode 8. In this episode, we talk about a lot more masks. You thought you knew masks in the last session, but you, my friend, were wrong. All right, so let's say I want to grab a selection of this dog. Uh, there's a lot of ways I could go about this. I could use the quick select tool to, uh, you know, go through and, and do all of that. But that's, uh, and, you know, we could probably get a fairly good selection doing it that way. Uh, in fact, looking at it now, this might even be the best way. But that doesn't help us for our demonstration shake. Uh, what I'm going to show you is way, way cooler. This I guarantee you. All right, so... <coughs> I could spend a lot of time talking about channels. Channels are arguably a more integral part of Photoshop than layers are and deserve quite a bit said about them. They were in Photoshop before layers in Photoshop were in Photoshop. All you need to know about channels for the sake of this tutorial is if you hit uh, control 3 and control 4 and control 5, you can see the red, green, and blue channel respectively. Look for the one with the most contrast between the foreground and the background. So in this one, it looks like this foreground image is completely black, or almost completely black, and the background image is mostly white. I'm just going to uh, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then Control 2 to get back to uh, our full colors. So Control 3 is red, Control 4 is green, Control 5 is blue. All you need to know is 3 through 5 is various black and white images for the sake of this tutorial. Channels are so important, but for the sake of this tutorial, they're just three black and white images. Uh, and then hit Control 2 to get back to, uh, you know, things as normal, color as normal. Uh, if those keyboard shortcuts were too much for you, go to my beginning tutorials. This is expert series. How many times do I need to say this? That's the first. I, I might say it again. Um, but um, all I was going to say is you can go into uh, window channels uh, and then you could find all of these things located here as well. I'm going to get out of window channels. All right, uh, I'm going to control D to deselect and then control V to paste. Now I'm going to open up curves. And I'm not going to open up a layer adjustment. I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, you could go to uh, image, uh, image adjustments uh, curves, but we can see what the keyboard shortcut is for this. Control M. And, and that makes sense because, you know, mm, curves. They're yummy, you know? Curves. It's, um, it's the uh, color correction technique that I use more than uh, basically, all of the other techniques combined, when we get into color correction, we'll be talking about that more, more. All you need to know about curves for the sake of this tutorial is if you click on this, you can set a white point. So I'm just going to click on this, and we're going to turn everything that looks like this white. So there we go. And if I click on this, I can turn everything past that point of gray to black. So what we're getting right here is, if you haven't guessed already, what we're going to use for the mask. So I'm going to say, uh, let's show original. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It separates um, this section and this section pretty well. I'm going to select it all, copy it, and I'm going to uh, <coughs> turn off this layer, deselect. Go to go to this layer. You'll notice nothing is selected right now. <coughs> I have nothing selected. And with that, I'm going to select the Add Layer Mask. So up until this point, I've only added layer masks uh, if something was selected. If you don't have anything selected, it just creates a uh, completely white layer mask. Uh, I'm going to go into this layer mask by uh, pressing Alt and then clicking on the layer mask. So holding down Alt and then clicking on the uh, layer mask thumbnail. And then I'm going to paste in what we just created. So I'm just going to paste this in. Uh, and then I'm going to deselect it. Um, so I'm going to go back to the layer, and uh, it looks like it's going the wrong way, so I'm just going to go here. I'm going to invert the colors. So let's go to uh, Window Masks. We'll do it without a shortcut because I know I'm throwing a lot of things your way. I'm going to click on Invert, and uh, now what we have is a rough selection. Before I go through and refine this selection further, I just want to go through all of the steps that I just did. You could replay the video to do it. Uh, but I think it's uh, worth our time for me just to go over. You'll notice I, I, I'm just dragging this mask to the trash can, uh, and then I can hit delete. I want to remove the mask. I want to get out of here. All right. I hit control 3, 4, and 5 to get black and white images. I liked this one the most because it had the most contrast. I copied that. 
I went back to seeing all the channels at once, and then I pasted it in. Uh, then I went into curves with Control M. I grabbed a white point. I grabbed a black point. Here we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe I could even shift it up a little bit. So there we go. Um, again, I'll talk about curves more later in the future. I got that, and then I selected all with Control-A. I copied it. I turned off the layer. I deselected, and then I created a layer mask. So I selected on the layer that I wanted to create the layer mask for, and I clicked Layer Mask, and that just creates an all-white layer mask. Then by holding on Alt, I can go into that layer mask and paste in what I want to be there. Remember, black uh, hides, white shows. So I'm going to go into uh, Window, Masks, and Invert it. I could also do that with color correction, and now we're getting this. All right, so those are the steps. If you didn't get it after me going through it twice, just watch it again. Um, I, I thought that was pretty clear that time, and I was rather happy with what I did. All right, so I could go in here and uh, making sure the layer mask portion of this layer, not the layer portion, the layer mask portion of this layer is selected. I could go in with the brush, and uh, let's just increase this, making sure it's set to black, and just start getting rid of things. Or, if I wanted to do a clean up here, let me press X, and then I'll go here. I'm going to hit D just to make sure I don't have a dark brown. Um, so that I want, this I don't want, so I'm just going to put that back. Or I could hit Alt, I could go into the mask, and then I could just get rid of everything here. So obviously that's not what I want. Um, because it's kind of hard to see here that there's all of these little uh, you know, problems with it over here, unless I zoom in really far. Uh, but if I go to the mask, Alt, and then click the thumbnail, I can see exactly what the problems are. So I'm just, I'm just going to go through, and I could fix it up completely, um, you know, decreasing the size of the brush where I don't want it that way. Or I could go in here, and you know, I could shift, holding down shift, I could click here, and I could um, now go in with my lasso tool, or even my polygonal lasso tool, and just get the selection uh, more of how I want, uh, just refining it further. What I want to make clear is this is a way to go back and forth with your selections as much as possible. And once you uh, save out the document or once you uh, hit uh, delete, and I'm putting delete in quotation marks, once you add a mask, so let's go back here, just going to go in here right now. Uh, once you add a mask, um, when you go to save the document, uh, you don't lose it next time you open it up. I'm going to invert this with Control shift i and just going to paint black on here. I can adjust this as much as is needed um, and really keep refining it. But actually, the way that I normally do it is if it looks like there's going to be a big difference between the foreground and the background, um, I will either try to use um, our quick select tool or I'll just go in and try to do it um, so you'll notice that's pretty good right there. Um, or I'll go in and see if any of the channels can help me select it out. Um, and a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, I'll have a, I'll have a lot of luck with it. So that's just going into, again, masks, setting the white point, setting the black point, <coughs> and then as needed, moving this up and down. All right, so let's get out of this. That's how to make, you know, I, I would go in and uh, you know I could keep going into this selection and get rid of all of this stuff over here. Um, I, I don't feel it's needed. I think you get the idea of how to use masks uh, in an even more advanced way by combining them with channels. Uh, if this wasn't enough, uh, and you are curious how it would go through and get the rest of this selection, uh, please do drop me a comment, and either I'll provide a link to something that will make things clearer or I will give a supplementary video for this. All right, so that's a little bit more advanced on how to use masks in conjunction with channels. This has been Jeremy Schubeck. Uh, please click subscribe. Please tell your friends. Please add a comment. Thanks for joining.